Hey everyone, welcome back to Casual Watch Review Channel. This week we're going to be reviewing the new watch from one of my favourite micro brands and that is Detroit Mint. And it is a true micro brand. It is Dave in his workshop assembling these watches himself. Dave is also from Detroit, unlike the founders of that other watch brand. Shinola. Son, you're gonna be all right. His early watches were exploring his passion for vintage Seiko and they were a little bit homage -y. The last couple of years he's been really exploring his passion for racing. One of my favourites of his recent ones was his interpretation of the watch that was worn by Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He did his own take on that vintage Citizen watch. He also did a watch inspired by his love for the Ford versus Ferrari film and that was the Cobra watch which we also reviewed on the channel. But this might be my favourite watch that he has released so far and that is the new Detroit Mint Classic. This may look like a more simple designed watch than some of his previous ones but I think this is probably one of the best that I've seen. It is a more refined design. It's using the NH35A movement and what Dave does is he's regulated some of these NH35A movements. I have never seen a micro brand regulate an NH35A movement. The watch that I've been wearing is keeping time to about minus two seconds a day. Now of course these movements they can react to temperature and positional accuracy. I'm not saying that this will keep that consistent two seconds like a Rolex would, for example, but it's pretty cool that he's gone to that effort and it really shows his passionate for wanting these watches to arrive with the new owners to the highest quality that he can make within the price point. And wow, what a price point. These are going for less than $250. This is a US-owned micro brand that is assembling watches in Detroit for less than $250. It's amazing to me that he can produce these watches for that price to this quality. But of course, I'm gonna ask your opinion at the end in the comment section. We're gonna do a hands-on review for this one, so let's flip the camera around and dive straight in. Here we have two versions of the Detroit Mint Classic, the blue and green. I also did have the black as well, but I gave this to a colleague at work who collects these value for money tool watches because I wanted to get his feedback as well. So thanks for Darren for giving me some of your thoughts and I'll be using them as part of the review just to verify some of the things that I thought about the watch. It's always nice to have somebody else review it as well and confirm or contradict some of the opinions I had of this watch. There's something about this watch on the wrist that just makes me smile. It's very wearable with a 40 millimeter case and a 48 millimeter from lug to lug. The overall thickness is only 12.5 millimeters, which also adds to the comfort and the female end links means that the bracelet falls nicely on the wrist. I think of this watch as looking more like a rail style watch, although a couple of people had seen it on my wrist and commented that they looked a bit like a date just. To me, the two watches do look very different. The classic is a far more tall, industrial looking watch than the date just. And I think that is aided by the fact that the case is completely brushed along with the Jubilee bracelet, proportion crown with industrial knurling on it, and the Detroit Mint D proudly etched into to the end. There is a high polished bezel and also the case back is high polished as well. The case back has a very interesting compass etching on the back along with information about the water resistance of the watch being 200 meters. The high polishing of the bezel really draws your eye to the star of the show for me which is the dial. Dave typically does sunburst dials on a lot of his watches but this is a textured dial and it looks to me almost as if it's stacked slate tiles gives a lot of visual intrigue to the dial. I thought I would like the green the most but when I was deciding which one of these to keep for myself I did opt for the blue one but I do think the green has a very unique look to it. The dial is complemented by a seconds track around the outer rehort of the dial and that has a rally-esque look to it to my eye but it's not obtrusive. Applied indices, the silver surround of the date and the high polishing of the hands really bring the whole design together. I'm a big fan of these hands. They are sword style with a bevel down the center and the second hand is highly polished with an arrow tip to it. Bonus points always for me if the minute hand goes all the way to the minute track. 10 out of 10 for that on this watch. Here we can see a loom shot. We've got plenty of loom on here. Not quite to Seiko standards but still very good for a micro brand like this. The Jubilee bracelet is completely brushed so no polished center links. Gains a lot of points for having solid end links 
legs, but the fitting isn't exactly perfect as we get towards the end of the lug. The fitted end links do slightly sit proud of the lugs on both sides, and this is on both the blue and the green version as well, so the tolerance could be tightened up slightly. Bracelet has a little bit of jangle to it and flex. That means that it wears very nicely on the wrist. We have a milled clasp mechanism. Clasp itself is a press clasp with Detroit Mint laser engraved on it. We also have a security fold over clasp as well. The watch comes in a watch roll that also includes an additional 22 millimeter strap. The 22 millimeter lug width on this adds to the overall design of this. I perhaps would have preferred it if it was 20 mil, but the 22 millimeter lug width makes the bracelet look as if it's almost slightly integrated to my eye. The slightly convex nature of the back of the case and also the way the watch is weighted. A lot of the weight is towards the back of the watch, means it wears beautifully on my 7.2 inch wrist. Very wearable for smaller wrists as well because of the female end links on the Jubilee. Really conforms to the wrist nicely and that little bit of stretch in the Jubilee also helps it wear nicely as well on the wrist. Overall I think Dave's done a very good job of this watch. Probably one of my favourites that I've seen from him as well. He did send these watches in for review so a big thanks to him. But more importantly, as with all of these reviews really interested to know what you think let me know in the comment section down below if you want to give your opinion live join us on one of our live streams if you subscribe and hit that bell notification you'll see the next time we do a live stream would love you for you to get involved in the comments we'll react to them live always appreciate you watching i'll see you next time on casual watch reviews